Good girl. Mari. Yes, good job. First time trying those big fish pieces. Yuna, are you a sweet pea? Where's my eye contact? Yes, you good job. Nikolai? Nikolai? Oh, good work. Good boy. Kimari, last one for you. Good job! She didn't even look where the fish went, she just looked at me and that's it. So she knows. When baby's ready, lick my hand. Who wants to go sit down for coffee, huh? All right, good puppies. What is that? Huh? That's gonna be Yuna's. Oh, it's funky. <laughs> no wonder they like it. Oof. <laughs> Don't make any crumbs. <laughs> My cheese. You want to scoop that up? Do you want a fish? Do you want a fish? Where's my papa's? Both papa's? Mm -hmm. This video is gonna be all about you, Nikolai. Mm -hmm. All about you. So we're finally filming this video that we've been wanting to for a while. We want to share with you Nikolai's story. Nikolai's transition from eating a kibble diet, it's, it's quite the story, to eating a raw food diet just like Yuna and Kimari do. I think Kimari is still looking for little fish scraps. But when we adopted Nikolai about almost two years ago now, he was around one years old and he came with a bunch of health issues. We actually have his his uh, vet records for a dog that's barely a year old that was in and out of the vet's office with all kinds of medications. He was eating different kind of kibble. And then typically what happens when you go to a um, allopathic typical vet is when a dog has a bunch of digestive issues, skin issues, all kinds of problems, they throw up, they have diarrhea, 
all that stuff. They just put them on science diet, prescription diet. So that's what Nikolai was on, that and some medication. And um, he had a bunch of dermatitis. If you guys are familiar with that, it's this problem where the skin gets an infection and there's crusties on it and the hair falls off. So at a year old, that's what he had. He had a bunch of plaque on his teeth. He, um, he didn't mind the food, like he was fine with the kibble that he was eating because um, he had nothing else to eat. His coat was like a, a rough cut off coat. It was weird. It was like the fur was just broken down. Like the fur couldn't just fully grow without breaking. And um, he was very, very hyper, very hyper. I mean, we all know that young dogs that don't get proper structure and exercise and all that good stuff, that they don't have the best manners, but he was next level hyper. He was just pacing up and down. He just, he couldn't sit still even after extensive exercise, didn't matter. He was clearly not um, balanced or well from the inside out like he's now. This is how he's now. This boy really loves to chill. He he really likes his food. His coat is just, it's so soft. So Yuna and Kimari have been raw by that time, I think about three years. I think. Almost four, I think. Yeah, it was a while. And it felt so awkward to feed him kibble while we were feeding them raw food. Cause you know, it's we don't like to transition cold turkey unless it's like a, an emergency. So we were filling Nikolai's bowl with kibble and then they all got their fresh food. It felt so weird. Actually, before we continue, we're actually gonna do brunch for them in a little bit and you guys can see what we're feeding them today, what's on the menu and they, they love their food. They always look forward to it. So I'm just trying to remember if Yuna and Kimari smell the kibble and if they... I don't think they ever cared for it. They were just waiting for their food, huh? Yeah. And I wonder if he even realized, but it's just, it was this, it was a weird feeling. Like I couldn't wait to actually go through the whole kibble to raw transition uh, process with him. But it's just that whole process in between was really difficult to keep giving that. Especially, do you remember he had constant diarrhea on the kibble? Especially yeah. on science diet when we, we adopted him from Florida and we had a long drive home and we didn't want to immediately start on something because the kibble that he was on was awful. The science diet is just horrendous. But we didn't want to, you know, have him have him adapt to a new environment and also the pups and us and the travel and hotels and all of that. Um, and also change the kibble in the same time. So we yes. were just... So we kept them on that same kibble. Yeah, on that science diet for the drive home. But it was, we actually had um, another kibble that I researched that I didn't feel so guilty about to transition him on because I wanted him to be on the kibble until we transition. So I think it was one night at the hotel that JC and I decided, you know what, we are done with this diarrhea. It's awful. It's not doing, we tossed the whole science diet bag in the trash at the hotel, remember? Yeah. And we were like, we're done with that. And um, we switched him to a different kibble so he can go through the transition process. And then he's still TMI, but you dog parents know, kibble poop is ginormous. <laughs> he had giant poops and it improved a little bit. Like his diary wasn't as bad, but it was still not great. These poor dogs, they don't know any better because after all, every single thing that they eat in their lives is what we give them. It just really depend on us what they eat and dog parents go years feeling like something is not right when you feed kibble right like you feel it you know in your heart that's not real food it's like imagine living on mcdonald's every day you know that it's gonna catch up eventually you know we tried premium kibble we did all that stuff that i think so many dog parents do because yeah, what else can you do right so we we're giving them the best mm -hmm. the best the best but yeah expensive it was like over a hundred dollars a bag of the kibble it was crazy it was like the the best of the best uh fast, fast food, food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but eventually caught up and kimari was around six or seven years old when that happened and she was diagnosed with cancer while she was on expensive kibble and her whole life has changed since then and we did so much learning and so much deeper 
research and that's a whole other story that we share actually in our Kibble to Rock course the course that we use to transition Nikolai we go in depth about Kimara's entire cancer story but I think that's what a lot of people do they just spend months and months and maybe even years just researching this this topic of how to feed your dog a healthy diet and that's the thing too like I I did research on my own too before he got before Kimari got cancer and there was just so much conflicting overwhelming information every resource I bumped into was just like I don't everyone was like disagreeing with the other author it's almost like carnivore people and keto people arguing with vegans and vegetarians it's just like they're just going at it like <laughs> fighting with each other like what's the best way to do it and in the meantime the dogs end up suffering because we get overwhelmed as people because obviously dogs don't come with a manual so we're just like okay you know what we're just gonna feed the best kibble possible but after all kibble is just a bunch of food that dogs should not be eating which is mainly the carbs and that's you know there's so much to cover on that subject but yeah kimari after we changed our life and did a lot of research and worked with holistic veterinarians kimari was cancer free in 28 days her tumor just disappeared it was gone and it was it was an incredible time but this time with Nikolai it was a feel-good transition and I think that it's such a better transition <clears throat> right because when we were transitioning with Kimari and treating her tumor and like our hearts were filled with hope but fear and all that stuff mm -hmm. it's like something that I don't wish for any dog parent to go through to be in that state yeah. it's like it should be a transition like we had with Nikolai because it was fun, you know? It was yeah. so great. I'm so like, fortunate enough to start this healthy diet at such a young age. Yeah, look at that fluve. You have a big mane on you. Mm -hmm. Are you ready for winter almost? He's like in between blowing his coat and growing his new coat. But he's just, he's just a healthy, happy pupper. But it was, I remember when we actually gave, Nic Nic gave Nicola his first goat's milk bowl because I have a whole process how I transition dogs and we go through all of that in our kibble to raw course. I don't just go jump or mix kibble, mix raw, mix raw food together. Like I, I like to, after all the learning and research I've done and work with all these amazing holistic veterinarians, the gut really gets messed up from bad food, whether it's humans or animals, right? And Nikolai's gut was a hot mess, clearly, because he had diarrhea and he had all kinds of digestive problems and all the symptoms were showing. So the first thing to focus on was actually fixing his gut so he can adapt. And when he, it was funny because when I gave him his first um, raw milk bowl, goat's milk, goat's milk um, to help uh, prep his gut for the change, I, I called it the milky. You want milky? You want the milky? And he knew the word, remember? <laughs> I learned it pretty fast. Yeah, it was so cute. Like he was just, he got, I just remember, it just makes me feel like back in, back in the time when we did that, but giving him that food like every day, transitioning another, another little bit of raw milk, you know, raw goat's milk, and then slowly going through that entire process. And he just lit up every single time that he got to have another bite and another little part of of his raw food diet and that's when that's when the boy loved, learned to love food like he was eating before because that's all he had but the transition just changed him since we've had our kibble to raw course out i've really learned to relate and understand even more what dog parents are going through because the transition with kimari was like hugely overwhelming i didn't know what i was doing yet back then i was being guided and, and working with our holistic vet but it was such a good feeling when nikolai's transition came around that i had you know our own guide like i was able to follow the transition meal plan all the steps and the stages that i set out just to be able to follow even our own course just made the transition amazing and what we heard and learned from a lot of dog parents who have left us notes, who have left us all kinds of incredible messages about the course, is that I find some common denominators why people um, are so reluctant in even transitioning to begin with, is one of the biggest things is they're afraid that it's gonna be expensive. That's one of the things, you know? I was afraid of that too, because I just couldn't find the right information and all this pre-made stuff in, 
and the stores are really expensive and it doesn't even make any sense it didn't make any sense back then so the cost is a big factor and then the other thing is like is it gonna take a lot of time because sometimes people see other people feed raw food and it seems so complex and overwhelming you know from a time-consuming standpoint I already know it's not gonna take me a long time I already knew from the other point that it's not going to be something that I have to worry about if the nutrition is complete because that's another really big common thing that I see is people are concerned that the nutrition is not going to be complete, right? So I already knew from the transition with them and from everything that we've learned and from the Kibble to Rock course that we've built, I already knew and felt so confident that the food I'm going to feed Nikolai is going to meet exactly what he needs and also his personal needs because every dog is an individual they all have their own needs and their own characteristics and it goes the same with food and that is what we taught in the course and i was literally following our own course and own methods to identify what his problems were what he need his needs are and what i need to fix because he already had health issues right so those are the things that i hear from other dog parents and if you're sitting here watching this video and you're like wow I want to transition my dog too I I can understand like I know where you're coming from if you are feeling those things the fears that I just mentioned it's normal everybody feels the same way I had the same concerns right and a bunch of other concerns which we talk about and totally dismantle in the course and help you get past them so it's normal. Don't feel like this is not a normal thing. Everybody goes through the same thing. And this is exactly why we built this course is because we understood and we knew from our own experience that dog parents just, you know, can't find a solution. I couldn't find a solution. I wish I could have found a course back then like this, but we couldn't. And this is exactly why we built it. And to see so many dog parents hundreds of dog parents around the world living in different places different languages different breeds different ages you name it different sizes we have tiny little kibble to rock graduates they're so cute i can like literally hold them both in my hands probably if i want to to big um what are those what's that breed called oh my gosh i can't remember the big big black super giant thank you for your sprinkle of your hair in my coffee i appreciate that Mastiffs? Ma was it Mastiff? Some kind of Yeah, mastiff. all the way to the biggest sizes. It's amazing the people and the dogs that have transitioned through this course that all one by one said that they could have not made this possible without it. And this is why I'm so happy that we have this course out. And I use it too. I love it. So let me tell you a story about Nikolai's transition because I think that a lot of people go through different things with their dogs and they have so many different little health problems that we kind of just brush off and say, oh, you know, there's an allergy or there's some kind of a problem, right? So about three months into transitioning Nikolai, he wasn't eating kibble anymore, he was on raw, he was doing really good, he was really happy with his food, everything was really, really going really well. But then one day, it was sometime around midday, he suddenly started having really bad diarrhea and he was throwing up and he was really lethargic and I just, I freaked out. It didn't make sense. Nikolai lay down. Nikolai lay down. Nikolai. Down. Down. Nikolai lay down. That's a good boy. You already had your treat so you can't get another one right now. Manners are important. So I didn't know what was going on because it didn't make sense. The food he was eating was really high quality. He was not kibble anymore. It's already, some time has passed. But just like I have the whole process in Kibble to Raw, I kept a journal of everything that I introduced slowly and the proper method of doing it. I did, of course, the same knit for Nikolai because that's what we really believe in. Sure enough, I look at the food journal and I realized that I had just introduced chicken eggs that morning to Nikolai. And, you know, all of our other dogs were fine on and chicken eggs high quality organic um, cage free all that good stuff but that was the only thing i did right that was the only new he's already been eating quail eggs at that point and he was completely fine with that but the common denominator here that i realized that something is off is that i gave him something new and it was chicken eggs so 
I just didn't give him chicken eggs anymore after that. I went through a little bit of an elimination cleanup diet after that experience. But I tested it a couple of weeks later with a tiny bit of egg and he started having slight diarrhea again. So that's the beauty about doing it when you follow a proper protocol, proper procedure, how to do this whole thing, you're able to identify what your dog is sensitive to while you're healing them. Because even though Nikolai was already raw for about maybe a month, he was already fully raw, but um, he still had lingering issues. You know, if it takes a whole over a year to get a health issue, or just like Kimari, it took her six, seven years to get cancer, our holistic vet actually gave me that inspiration. Um, what he said is if it takes that long for a problem to come up, don't expect an overnight, overnight solution. And that was the same thing with Nikolai. His gut was still not okay. And he was sensitive to eggs. And it was so cool to have this method to follow and figure this all out. Because guess what? We even resolved that problem. Nikolai loves chicken eggs. And he's actually gonna get some of that in his food today. And he is fine now because after I identified it, I was able to understand, okay, this is this thing we have to be careful about. This is what he's sensitive to. But I didn't go in my mind, oh, okay, he's never gonna be able to, be, to eat eggs and blaming the egg that there's a problem with him eating egg. It's a problem internally that he couldn't handle that perfectly healthy food. But because we were going through the entire proper gut adjustment process in kibble to raw and all the milk that he was getting and all the bone broth that we make and all the other nice digestive supplements that we give, he is able to eat everything. There is literally not a food that Yuna and Kimari eat that he can't eat at this point. He eats everything and his stools are perfect. He has no diarrhea and mm -hmm. he is doing wonderful. You want to eat, huh? We're going to eat in a few minutes. Fast forward almost two years now. Nikolai has not been to the vet a single time. He's been healthy. All his dermatitis healed. His coat is beautiful. He has no digestive issues. His stool is perfect. His teeth have cleaned up because he loves his turkey necks. He loves meaty bones. It's one of his favorite things. I mean, they all love it. Let's just face it but he's not had any problems anymore. And this is exactly what we're hearing from hundreds of dog parents who have taken the time not only to study the course, but who have actually left us nice reviews about the course. We have over 100, 100% five-star reviews on Kibble to Raw because dog parents are experiencing the same thing. They are reluctant to feed raw, they find our course, they're able to transition their dogs. A lot of them heal problems, existing problems. A lot of them are taking it because they don't want to get problems later on. So we're hearing all those personal stories and there's no better feeling for us than knowing that we can make such a positive impact because there's no way we can teach every single person individually how to do this. And that's why we built this course. So seeing dog parents from you name it, from Netherlands, Switzerland, all over the US, Mexico, so many countries, so many members now who have taken the course, who've been so happy. So I want to actually read to you verbatim some of the reviews and some of the notes that dog parents have left us from taking the Kibble to Rock course. You can go in the comment section of this video, the first comment where you can read all of them if you like. They're all incredibly inspiring. But I just want to read some of them so you can see the impact and how good it feels to make this transition with your dog. So this is from Bonnie from Florida. And she says, this course was just what I needed to take the plunge into raw feeding. I love the videos. The amount of reference material and links would have taken me months to find on my own, but here it is all in one place. Thank you, Husky Squad. Once you have a better understanding of the entire process of raw feeding, which will you'll get from this course, you'll feel much more confident. I've been considering this for some time and this course was the extra push I needed to start. In my situation, I have a dog with allergies and yeast and we tried so many things, but none of which have helped. I know in my gut that it's the kibble that is the problem. So here's a dog parent taking the situation that's going on with their dog at hand and resolving it with the course because, you know, Bonnie probably went to the vet 
couldn't resolve it, medications, bills, you name it, just keep stacking up and there's no solution. So this is a story, of, this is a very common story actually of why dog parents end up taking the course because they want to resolve health problems. And we're so happy for you, Bonnie, and I'm sure that things are going amazing now for you and your dog. This is amazing. Here's another one, Ashley. This is what Ash Ashley says. I cannot say enough good things about the Cable Through Rock course. The way it's put together pays for optimal learning and the extra resources were beyond helpful. As we complete the 15 week transition meal plan, I'm extremely pleased with how gentle it was for my pups and how easy the plan was to follow. My pups go crazy over their raw food and I couldn't be happier that we made the switch to better, healthier lives. It's already made such a huge difference in our rescue pup that came to came on so many prescriptions for tummy issues. He's on no more prescriptions and he's doing amazing. I wanted to make this switch, but with so much information out there, I got really overwhelmed. That's what happens. Having the kibble to rock course with everything I needed to know in one place was a no brainer for me. For a busy mom, I needed things streamlined and in one place. This was it for me. I learned more than I even thought I would. Beautiful. This just makes me so happy. I love reading this because we all have busy lives. We all have a, mil a million things to do and we don't have time to spend years trying to figure things out on our own or just get really confused. And this is why we wanted to build a course that's easy to understand, easy to follow, and something that you feel like you can do long term, not just like for a little bit and then stop because it's too much. Because this is exactly what we all need, something that's realistic, right? Here's another one. This is the last one I'm going to read. You can continue reading that on, on the Kibble to Raw page yourself. If you're on the fence about feeding raw or that it's going to be a difficult change or way too much to learn, definitely give this course a try. I felt this way as well and decided to just take the plunge and I couldn't be happier that I did. This Kibble to Raw course met my expectations and beyond. I expected mostly a meal plan and a few notes about feeding raw, but the information in this course is vast and knowledgeable. I learned much about feeding raw and feel so confident with feeding it to my dogs now. The meal plan was amazing and better than I thought it would be. And that's from Jeffrey. So what Jeffrey experienced in this course is exactly what we wanted to pass on. I didn't just want to share okay, this is a meal plan, you can follow it, and then you have to get another meal plan, and then you have to figure things out on your own. We didn't want to do that. We wanted for you to understand how to put a meal together, learn how, how to understand your dog as an individual with their own particular issues they may have been facing or, the, or how you know, they, they have um, health elements that you need to resolve. We wanted to teach you to be able to identify and then be able to adapt and build on that accordingly. And this is exactly what we did with this course. Obviously, the meal plan is there and it helps so much and it's great for transitioning. But once you're done with this 15, meal, 15 week transition meal plan, you are on your feet. You know exactly what you're doing and you know how to feed any dog. It doesn't matter the breed or the age. <clears throat> nice burp, Kimari. For their entire life. Like for example, if I get decide to get a, a teacup chihuahua tomorrow, I know exactly what to do and so will you, you know? It's something that you learn one time and it's a foundation that lasts you forever and this is exactly why we love seeing so many of you to be part of this so now we're about to go feed the pups show you what's on the menu Nikolai is gonna get to have his delicious eggs that he loves but uh, before I forget I wanted to mention that because we're finally making um, this video about Nikolai's transition story we are going to offer an amazing discount for the first 100 students because we've reached over 100 five-star reviews. Use the code Nikolai. The first 100 students that join the course using this coupon is going to get an amazing discount in the course. I want to see many, many more of you making this change because we all need to do that. Our dogs deserve it. They deserve to live a healthy, happy life they deserve real food just like we all deserve real food right they deserve the same and none of us want to be in a situation where we say i wish we didn't having to fix the aftermath you know be in the prevention space you can be like oh everything is fine my dog eats kibble everything is fine for now eventually these things catch on 
because just like you're eating fast food every day, you can't expect to be healthy. You're eating candy, all the stuff every day, you can't expect to be healthy. The same goes for our dogs. You have to be proactive and you'll be so glad that you did, right? Let's go have food. Yes, you hungry babies? You wanna eat? Would you like an egg on top? Huh? <laughs> I love the way he does that. <laughs> Whenever it's food related, he does a little lump. All right, let's go have food. Ready? Let's go. Come on. Let's go, babies. Let's go have food. All right. Let's make food for the Husky Squad and let me show you our menu today. Before I actually show you the simplicity of this meal, I just want to kind of go over the comparison. When you feed dogs a kibble diet and you turn a kibble bag around and you look at the ingredients, you're not going to understand half of it. You don't know how much of what is in there. There's synthetic vitamins, all kinds of preservatives, you name it, carbs, things that dogs should not be eating. But when you feed this way, this is all they're eating and you actually know exactly what goes in their bowl. When I fill this bowl up with their food and I put it in front of our dogs, I know what's in it and it feels good to feed them. It's amazing. It feels so, so good as a dog parent. So let me go over this really quick. This is their primary part of their meal. This is actually a turkey blend. This is 100% turkey. It's hormone free, raised well, good quality meat and it has everything that your dog needs from the meat component of the diet. They're very excited, as you can tell. They can never be stop being excited for their food. So what's in this is the correct muscle amount, the correct and the different types of organs that dogs need to get all the nutrients that they need and their bone content. You can either buy this or make this yourself, but this is a critical piece of a healthy diet and it can't just be one protein source. You have to learn and understand the different organs, the different proteins, the different nutrient profiles and what your dog needs. This is how you have a nice balance when you feed variety, right? This is on their menu today, but their menu is changing tomorrow, right? So this is the main component here that's turkey today. Then we have the green beans and you have to process it really finely whenever you feed veggies to dogs because they don't have the side to side motion that herbivores and that we do when we chew fibrous content. That's why it's so important you saw me chop this up. It takes no time to do that. And I do that with all the veggies I feed the Husky Squad. And don't worry, all of this stuff that I'm showing you briefly here is things we talk about at length and explain everything very well in the Kibble to Rock course. So this is not just you know, to try to go through it really fast. It's just to show you what we actually do every day. So when I chop this up, I usually have veggies for a nice couple of days and I just store it in the fridge. It's so easy. And then today on the menu, of course, we're gonna have one of the squad favorites. This is organic eggs, pasture raised. And as far as the supplements, we're doing a probiotic, which I add sometimes. And that's another thing I do too. I don't over supplement. I give intentional supplements and I rotate. And then we have a green mineral blend that we're gonna add to their food today. So that's pretty much it for their food. It's nice, it's simple, it's nutrient dense. Nothing of what they don't need and everything that they need, right? So I use a scale and again, all this is in the course. And this is so good to do because this way you are not overfeeding your dogs or underfeeding your dogs. I know exactly how much a squad needs and I just put the bowl on top here and zero it out. So it takes away the weight of the bowl. I really like this contraption actually. And then I prep the food for the squad. So I'm filling Nikolai's bowl and he actually needs quite a lot of food. He is like, his metabolism is insane. He eats way more than any dog we've ever fed, which is fine. He's an individual and that's, and that's the thing about our course is that we teach all of that. The Kibble to Rock course guides you to understand exactly how much your dog should be eating and you're able to fine tune it to perfection so your dog achieves that perfect, balanced, healthy weight where you can see their waistline. You don't see any ribs, but you have a nice slender weight because a healthy weight is so important for good health. And this is why using the scale, and I know exactly by now the number, like Nikolai actually eats 11 and a half ounces per meal, which is a lot. But for example, Yuna, 
who is really heavy, she's our heaviest pup even though she's little, she needs the least amount of food or she will <laughs> expand really fast because her metabolism kind of she digests things slowly and she keeps everything that she eats, right? So with Yuna, I know exactly what she needs and she cannot eat more than 7.6 ounces per meal. But I was able to narrow it down because I know exactly how to do it. This is how we teach you how to do it in the course so you can feel confident that whenever you feed your dog, you know exactly how much they need. You don't overfeed, you don't underfeed, and this is why you have like nice, healthy, balanced weight throughout their entire life. It's, it's incredible. So I already know that the eggs weigh approximately two ounces, and this is how I'm able to adjust everything, but this is perfection. Exactly what Nikolai needs, Kimari, and Yuna, and um, this is the majority of the actual weight that they need for their food. So now I'm just going to add the chopped up green beans that I process really finely and this is a quarter of a cup each. Yuna gets a little bit under a cup, Kimari gets, I mean a quarter cup, Kimari gets about a quarter of a cup and Nikolai a little bit more than a quarter of a cup. And there it is, that's the green bean. So easy, I mean this is easier than cooking for yourself, you know. I was so wrong many many years ago when I thought that this would be a difficult process and that it would take a lot of time. I spend way more time preparing our meals than preparing their meals. It's so much easier. If only we can eat that way, <laughs> it would save so much time, right? Probiotics, I would say I probably do maybe twice a week on average and I don't overdo it either. Everybody got their probiotics. And now we're gonna do the green supplement and all of that is covered in the course. We give very specific supplements for different reasons, different dogs need different things, different life stages may need different things when it comes to supplementation. Maybe you wanna do a detox. There's different reasons why to supplement. But again, we don't give a ton in general anyways. So here is the extra green minerals for the pups. I'm just gonna add a little bit more and then we're gonna put the egg on top. But um, but yeah, don't worry too much. It doesn't, that's a nice thing about feeding raw and about learning and understanding what a dog needs instead of just following a meal plan or instead of just trying to get some information online is that you feel after a while that you actually know what you're doing. You know, you know that you're gonna give them a balanced diet. You know they're gonna get what they need. Not every single day is gonna be the same food. It's always gonna vary a little bit. And that's the beauty of it. I mean, we don't eat chicken every single day, right? Or the same veggie every day. And this is how dogs eat too. And this is how animals eat in the wild. And that's a lot of it. The purpose is, is for them to eat more like nature intended, how they would if they were to eat in the wild. So for the girls, I like to smash the eggshells because they otherwise won't really eat a whole lot of it. And even eggshells have great health benefits for dogs. But Nikolai, he loves his egg so much, all of it, that he crunches on the shell. Just watch till you see him eat it. He's adorable. Yum. Licky, licky, Mari. Oh, they can't wait. This is like part of the routine. I always let them lick the spoon and they know they're about to eat when that happens. All right, Yuna. Are you ready, Mama Love? You good girl. Where's my eye contact? Oh, you good girl. Lay down. Good girl. I come back. Alright. Yes, good job. You love your raw food? Yeah, look at that tail. You're a good boy.
All right, guys, it was so nice having you today, sharing with you our meals for the squad, sharing with you Nikolai's amazing experience transitioning from kibble to raw. I hope you found this inspiring and that you give this a try. Make the transition with your dog. Why wait until you have problems? Why not feed your dogs a healthy raw food diet that you can feel good about? just like so many of our members are experiencing who have taken the Kibble to Rock course. Remember, take advantage of the code Nikolai. The first 100 students are gonna get an amazing discount. Make sure that you do that before we fill up the entire 100 seat from this experience so you can be part of this. Everything we talked about and a link to the Kibble to Rock course is linked here in the description of the video and in the first comment. You can also go directly to huskysquad.com or kibbletoraw.com and you'll find the course there. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you guys next time on Husky Squad. Bye.